G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Ben. Today we're gonna to have a chat about my latest read, Jordan Peterson's Beyond Order, 12 More Rules for Life. I read Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos, which I guess you could consider volume one in his 12 rules. Uh, end of 2018, beginning of 2019. I know that because I got married at the beginning of 2019. I had the book with me there. I remember liking that book. Um, I might be misremembering because it was a couple years ago. And after reading this one, I, I want to go back and have a look at it and see if it's how I remember it. But I remember enjoying it for the most part. I remember it being a good, solid book, a necessary book, especially for the times. Peterson advocates for personal responsibility and facing one's demons and you know, gives clues on how you might wrangle order out of a chaotic life. And he does so with intrigue and intelligence often in the way of stories, mostly from his clinical practice as a clinical psychologist, but also through like Disney stories or you know, common folk tales and things like that to hone in his point. Just reinforcing why each of his rules was important and why it should be incorporated into one's life. So needless to say, I was excited for this next volume. Um, wanted to dive in and see what the next 12 rules for life were according to Jordan Peterson. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't as impressed this time around. There were some chapters I found great, such as Rule 9. If old memories still upset you, write them down carefully and completely. Peterson spoke briefly about a client he had as a clinical psychologist who had an incident in their childhood that was still impacting them, causing them great grief, even into their late 20s, early 30s. I can't quite remember exactly how old this person was. Um, but around that, you know, late 20s, early 30s mark and this incident was still, you know, sort of being built up and, and causing them a lot of angst. When the client recounted their story of what happened in their childhood, Peterson tells us he was forming an image in his mind of, of what had happened. And then once they were finished, he asked a couple key questions which completely changed what he'd been imagining and in turn changed how he viewed the incident. At which point he then asked his client to view things from an alternate perspective, not at all discrediting the story that they'd told him and the experience that they'd undergone, but perhaps reframing the way they thought about what had happened. Now, for the purposes of this video, of course, I'm giving you the bare bones details. There's much more to it than that. I think it was like a 30 odd page chapter. So yeah, there's, there's a lot more information there to unpack, but you get the gist. It's basically if old memories still upset you, which could be translated to if old memories still cause you pain or anguish, if they still burden you, if they still sap your joy, write them down carefully and completely where you'll be able to analyze them and slowly unpack them, either by yourself or with the help of someone else. Now, there were a few chapters like that that I enjoyed, but unfortunately there was more that, I don't know, I don't wanna say like disliked, it just was unimpressive. I remember talking to my wife as I was reading this book and I, again, I could be misremembering, but I remember 12 Rules for Life and Antidote to Chaos, the first volume in this 12 Rules series. Um, it's kind of like, you know, taking a walk along a path and you know where you're going because that's the chapter of the title. That's the rule, right? So, you know, you have a rough idea of a destination and you can even see it in the distance. And then you might sort of take a bit of a more of a scenic route or something, but the whole while, whether you take a, a direct path or a bit of a meandering path, it doesn't really matter. You can still see your destination in sight. So you know where you're coming from and you know where you're going, right? That's how most of the rules from my memory were set out in the first volume. This book, similarly, I mean, you obviously you know the rule at the beginning of the chapter, so you know where your destination is. And as you start out on your, on your journey, you can see in the distance again, where you're trying to go. But this time, instead of the path always being in sight of your destination, you kind of end up in a deep dark forest and you're like, shit, I might be lost here. And you have no idea where you are. You don't really know which way is north, south, east, west, whatever it might be. You don't know where to go to get to your just destination. You obviously know where you're trying to go, but you have no point of origin, right? And then suddenly you're at your destination and you're like, well, how did I get here? Like I certainly didn't walk here. We've just ended up here somehow. It was really bizarre. Take for instance, rule two, imagine who you could be and aim single-mindedly at that. Now this chapter ended pretty well in my opinion. He quite bluntly points out that to transform, you must pick a target, aim towards it and stumble forward. 
notice your errors and correct them along the way. If you find a better path along the way, you can change course because of course your goals are gonna change throughout your life. And with all that, with no small amount of luck, eventually you will become the hero of your own story. Now that's all great, I'm all for that. I think that's a, a sound message to tell people. However, the beginning and middle of that chapter, to be honest, most of the 40 pages that made up that chapter was meandering through the dark forest, having no point of origin. Like we have the biblical story of Moses, the serpent in the Garden of Eden, we've got the basilisk in Harry Potter, we've got some Mesopotamian gods, and the whole time you're like, how does this at all connect to the rule that you're trying to, you know, make a, make a case for? You're trying to advocate to imagine who you could be and aim single-mindedly at that. How does any of this help us reinforce that? Now, I like a philosophical discussion as much as the next person, more than the next person, if I'm honest. But a lot of this book felt like I was just listening to the, the author ramble without really knowing where they were going you know it's almost like and i mean you see this a lot in published books being an author it's kind of frustrating because it's like it's almost as if it was a first draft and they just got all their thoughts out on paper which is completely fine that's what a first draft is there for but you don't publish a first draft you go in and you hone it and you're like well does this make sense can i tighten up this wording here can i delete this paragraph and it still makes sense and unfortunately for me, that was the majority of this book. I feel you could easily cut out a good 30% and it not affect any of the rules whatsoever. It would still have the rules as well as some storytelling, which makes the journey a little bit more enjoyable, but without the aimless wandering that I believe chokes this volume unnecessarily. Don't get me wrong, this book hasn't put me off Jordan Peterson. I quite like the guy as much as you can like someone having never met them. Um, you know, I've come across his lectures online, I've watched dozens of interviews, and I've read two books from him now, as well as listening to his podcast. And I think his overall message is good. I think his message is sound, and I think it's important. I'm all for advocating for personal responsibility, and I wholeheartedly agree that facing your problems head on is much better than running from them. I genuinely believe the world would be a better place if more people thought like Jordan Peterson does, and spoke up as often as he has in the past. You're just having like proper deep thoughts about things and you know rules that are in essence very, very simple that you can apply to your life and hopefully, as I said earlier, wrangle some order out of the chaos that is life. But for me, this book is not holding pride of place on my bookshelf. Don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna get rid of it, paid good money for it. Um, and I may you know, come back to it in, I don't know, a year or two and give it another go. But for me right now, over the last month or so that I've been reading it, it was quite disappointing. The first one seemed really clean, concise, you know, perfectly edited. And this one, he, he just kind of rambled quite a lot. I wasn't really into that, but hey, that's me. Anyway, guys, that's it. That's all I've got for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. As always, stay cool.